Greetings, Zero here. Welcome back to the Seal Mod Type run of EV Emerald. Last time, we cleared Team Aqua out of their hideout and made our way to Moss Deep City. This time, we're after our seventh gym badge. And the only gym where double battling is mandatory. This is why it's technically not possible to do solo runs of Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. Now, normally, Tate and Lyser are pretty hard, but, again, I'm way over-leveled from when I was trying to shiny hunt a Magnemite or a Magneton in New, Bob New Mauville. So, uh, well, this shouldn't be very difficult at all. Also, the gym in Emerald version is way different than it is in Ruby and Sapphire. In Ruby and Sapphire, the gym's puzzle is kind of like the floor tiles in the Team Rocket hideout or the Brilliant City gym from Gen 1. Whereas, of course, here, instead you're just shuffling, shuffling things around. In fact, this isn't all that changes. The Trick Master also changes one of his challenges to take this into account. Because again, most of his challenges are based off of something you've faced in the gym already. Which goes to show you that he's not as clever as, he, as he'd like to think he is, or as clever as he'd like you to think he is, because he's basically just stealing ideas from gym leaders. Kind of like your average YouTuber, stealing video contents. Or... I was about to make a joke there, but nah, the punchline wasn't that funny. Moving on! Take on these ones. Now, I am, again, overleveled, but because you can only fight the gym trainers once... Whereas I can go back and battle other trainers anytime I want, I am going to take them all on. Okay, you need to go down, Wobbuffet. I do not trust you. And stay down. Anyways, moving on. I could actually technically do these as single battles, and you know what? I will. Hmm, which ones do I want to use? Okay, you know what? I'm going to run Starmori, because I'm probably going to get a lot of use out of Magneton and like, taking on Team Aqua later. Not to mention all the water routes. This Here's the thing. Until Victory Road, the rest of the game is entirely water routes. So, yeah. It gets annoying. Of course, this actually gives you an incentive to take the Grass-type starter for once, because this means that the late game gets really easy. Especially an Emerald version, because, well, spoiler, it has a different champion. It's Wallace instead of Steven this time. So, the champion uses a Water-type team. Partly offset by the fact that it's a very bulky Water-type team, which makes use of Rain Dance, and Rain Dance was absolutely broken in Gen 3 and 4, and 5, actually, if we could be perfectly honest. Basically, the... There is a reason why some people call the competitive meta in, from Generations 3 to 5 the Weather Wars. Until abilities like Drought and Drizzle were finally nerfed. So that way it didn't last as long. 
And now we gotta hit this twice. That opens up the way to Eliza. Okay, thanks, game. And down you go. I'm sorry, but if you're still using a Ralt at level 34, I have to wonder what's wrong with you. what you get for putting pearls before swine. Okay, a couple more gym trainers, and then we'll be ready to move on. And depending on how long it takes to beat Tate and Liza, we may also do something else right after that, before this episode ends. There you go, and that's the last of the gym trainers down. Hmm, wait a second. No, I fucked up. Okay, so now I do that. Then that, and now I can go over here. Hit this a couple of times. And I hit this, and now I'm ready to go. And just like that, we have found our way to the gym leader. Well, gym leaders, I should say. Plural. This is the only time this has ever been done in the series, if I recall correctly where you've had multiple gym leaders that you fight simultaneously for a gym badge. Whereas there are other gyms, like in Striation City, in uh, Black and White, where uh, there are three gym leaders, but you only fight one of them. And, uh, rather cruelly, it's the one that has the type advantage against your starter. And bear in mind, that's in a game where you are actually punished for power grinding, because you get diminishing returns experience-wise if your Pokémon is a higher level than the wild ones you're battling, which... Well, it makes the early game a massive pain in the ass. This shouldn't take long. 
Yeah, Soul Rock is the one I definitely want to go down first because it can use Sunny Day and Flamethrower. Which, even with that level difference, if I couldn't knock it out for some reason, well, that could hurt. Wow, you actually survived a hit! I'm impressed! My uh, question is, are you still going to be in healing range after you use that Citrus Berry? Nope. This battle is over. <clears throat> and there goes the battle. So we get the Mind Badge, but we also get the TM for Calm Mind. Calm Mind is to your special stats what Bulk Up is to your physical stats, and it's a psychic move, whereas Bulk Up is fighting. Also, I think more Pokémon can learn Calm Mind. <laughs> Alright, anyways, moving on. A couple things I want to show you. So this house right here... <clears throat> in Emerald version, this is where you would do some of the multiplayer minigames that were introduced in Fire and Leaf Green. In Ruby and Sapphire, this house had a second floor, which you could only access if you scanned an e-breeder card, and you could battle a unique trainer there. Unfortunately, again, the e-reader was never properly implemented, so that just didn't happen. Huh, that could be trouble. Let's see, do you have anything for me? Netball has increased catch rate against water and bug types. Good stuff. I may actually need that. Oh, and here's Scott. <clears throat> now, before we go and deal with Team Magma, there's something I want to go find in here. It's, I forget which house it is. Nope, it's not this one. Although that house does have a little thing with it. I don't know if I'll talk about it later. It's not consequential. Ah, uh, this is the one. I'm gonna need this. This guy gives you the Super Rod. Which I'm gonna need to catch a Whalmer. So I can get a Whale Lord. Although, you can catch Wild Whale Lord. Realistically speaking, it'd be easier to just catch a Whalmer. Hand it over to the, to the daycare couple. And then... Give it a rare candy once it's at level 39. <clears throat> Let me see, did I remember to restore power points? I, yes I did. Okay. Good. So you're never gonna guess what Team Magma's plan is. It's ex well, let me put it this way. It's as stupid as you've come to expect by this point. Yeah, I noticed. Then again, Team Aqua is not much better when it comes to subtlety. Yep, 5% chance it can miss. 
Fuel, huh? Is that what the kids are calling it these days? Skarmory, Pliss. Oh, so that's how it's gonna be, huh? Fine, be that way. Yeah, weaken this. And with that, he gets out of the way. And we can go upstairs. And we run to these assholes. Three to one, buddy. Do you know who I am? I'm the motherfucking mailman! And I've got a package for you! Pain! All at once or one at a time, it's all the same to me. In fact, in the remakes, you do fight! I think it's five of them at once? And they do about as well as you might expect. Of course, in the remakes, this section, you... Well, you play through the section in the Delta episode, which is the post-game segment. Also, fun fact, so... Back when I was a kid, there was the rumor that if you went... It's a playground rumor. You went to the Moss Deep Space Center at a certain time, you could go into space and battle the Oxus on the moon. I guess somebody at Game Freak heard about this and decided that, you know what, that would be really fucking cool! So they did that in the remakes. You get to fight the Oxus in space! That was one of the, re the changes in the remakes that I thought was a good change, actually, because that was way more interesting than Birth Island. Not to mention, you didn't need an event. Also, these guys over here are hostages. And here are these idiots. Okay. Are you guys supposed to be eco-terrorists, or are you the fucking Taliban? Because you do realize you're just going to get yourselves blown up, right? Oh, pick up an item. I have no words. Maxi, I'm sorry, but this is for your own good. This is an intervention. I'm saving you from yourself.
I'll just use spikes. Thanks for boosting my attack back up, dipshit. Now we'll use the yellow flute. That's the whole reason I got it. Oh, by the way, fun fact, in this battle, if you have a Pokemon with the Guts ability, and Steven sends in his Skarmory, he'll occasionally use Toxic on your Pokemon in order to give it a power boost. That's a pretty smart AI for Gen 3. Again? Alright, fuck you, Mighty Anna. But hey, if you want to keep boosting my attack power, fine. You would. Okay, this is obnoxious. Yeah, you know what? Fine, Maxi, if you're going to be like that, I'm just going to keep snapping it out. Of course, that's the other thing with these double battles, is that they take forever! I may actually have to cut this... When it, it's probably gonna get past the 10 minute mark at this rate, just because of... Maxi being a fucking bitch with swagger. Actually, then again, I'm on what? Plus 5 attack now? It's plus 3 or plus 5? I lost count. This should be a one-shot! Emphasis on should be. But of course, Air Cutter's power is split because there's two targets on the field. We're gonna use Swift. Okay, you're gonna keep boosting my attack? Fine. Finally! About time you did something useful, Steven. I'm a tang. All right. Well, now that Maxie's damn mighty Yenna's out of the way, maybe I might actually have a chance to deal some damage. Unless, of course, it makes it flinch again because, of course, I had to use Scary Face. Remember what I said in a prior episode about how Pokemon in the mid-game have movesets specifically designed to be annoying? This is one such case. Well, then again, that is entirely in character for Maxi. We've already established that. Uh, how do I put this? He doesn't understand that the paste in the classroom is not food.
And of course you're gonna do that. Because you can't fight me legitimately, that so Not gonna save you though. And it's entirely on you. Because you gave me that massive power boost. Agron, Pliss. Ugh, finally! That was annoying. Yeah, well, you can't always have what you want. But sometimes you get what you need. You think? Wow. You've had a moment of clarity. I didn't know you had it in you. Duly noted. Anyways, we're gonna pay him a visit in a sec. Oh yeah, talk to this guy after you clear out the hostage crisis, and you get a sunset. And now we are in Steven's house, we can talk to him, and we get the HM for dive. And with that, we're basically done here in Moss Deep City. Although I should I'm actually gonna add one more detail. So occasionally the game will bug out and won't register that you can fly to or from Moss Deep City. And I think Evergrande City does that too. It, it doesn't happen often, it's usually in ROM hacks. But uh yeah. Anyways, we're gonna do one more thing while we're here. We're going to catch ourselves a Whalmer. Using the very, very annoying fishing mini game of Generation 3. Nope. Do you see that? Yeah, you have to time it almost perfectly. And it can do that as many times as it wants, pretty much. Oh, we got a Sharpedo instead. Uh, not what I hope to find. Eh, might as well catch it anyway. I could use it for HMs. That's what I was trying to find! Oh, we got in the first try. Okay. That's one piece of the puzzle down. I'll be back for you later. We'll be using Sharpedo for HMs for a little bit anyway, and we're going to nickname you Mark 14. Those of you who know military history, well, you might get a chuckle out of that one. Nobody asked you. Yeah, that's your only hint that Rayquaza is supposed to be by Pacific Lodge Town. Anyways, we're here because we need to go and get Relicamp. So, first I'm going to use the Super Repel just for now, so I don't get interrupted constantly on my way to the diving spots. Because this is the route where you get Relicamp, and it's a 5% chance to encounter one. So, go here and use dive. And I will cut until we counter- Come on, Relicanth, show up! Not you! Finally! That was like pulling teeth. Get in the ball. Get in the ball. Get in the ball. Get in the fucking ball. In the ball. Get in the ball. Get in the ball! In the fucking ball! Finally! Anyways, we're gonna call you PETA for pain in the ass. A good while of this sort of shit later.
Thank you! Eat it, fatty! And there's the next key to the puzzle. But what to call you? I think that's fitting. It's a fucking blimp. So we're back here in Moss Deep City, so I think we're gonna call this an episode. This has been a pretty long one. Next time, we're gonna be working on getting ourselves red to steel. So if you like what you see, like, comment, subscribe, check out my Rubble page, and I will see you all next time.